Hello and welcome to this special presentation on Rajya Sabha Television, our special show wherein we bring you all aspects of uh, India's fight against COVID-19, be it uh, digital technological interventions or uh, the efforts made by several professionals, uh, the healthcare professionals, doctors uh, and others as well who are there in the front line of uh, you know, this fight against COVID-19. One very interesting aspect which we're going to talk about today is uh, the effect of this entire scenario, the COVID-19 scenario, the lockdown scenario on our environment, how it has uh, affected the environment. The reports which are coming in say that the air pollution has come down significantly in uh, several parts of not only India, but elsewhere in the world as well. Quality of uh, river water has uh, also gone up uh, in, in certain areas, be it uh, River Yamuna or uh, they were Ganges. Uh, you know, there are reports that mountain ranges are visible from as far as 200 kilometers, be it Saharanpur or be it Jalandhar. So for all that as to how it has happened and also the most important significant part, how can we sustain these gains which we have made as far as our environment is concerned now that the lockdown restrictions are being eased slowly and steadily. We have with us a very distinguished panel of guests. Let me first introduce the guests to you, beginning with Dr. Prashant uh, Gargava, he is uh, the member secretary of uh, CPCB, that is uh, Central Pollution Control Board. We also have with us uh, Ms. Sunita Narayan, uh, she is the director uh, general of uh, Center for Science and Environment. And we also have with us uh, an environmentalist, Professor C.K. Varshney, he is the former dean of School of Environmental Sciences, JNU. Welcome, all of you, to Rajya Sabha Television. And let me begin with you, Dr. Prashant. Let's start by putting some facts on the table here. What exactly is the situation in terms of uh, pollution levels, be it air pollution or water pollution and other aspects of our environment? Uh, Vishal, uh, there has been substantial improvement, you know, as far as environmental quality is concerned. Uh, however, it depends on multiple factors. You know, in certain cases when you had high pollution levels, uh, high emissions coming in, and because of reduction in activities, you know, substantial the curtailment of activities, pollution levels have gone down. Mm -hmm. Air pollution, vehicles, industries, they are major sources. So all major cities, since vehicles were off the roads, there was substantial improvement seen. Large number of towns and cities, PM10, PM2.5 levels have gone down. Most of the places we are in satisfactory air quality conditions. If you look at Delhi data, last year we had 18 poor and very poor category AQI days in Delhi. And during, sorry, in the month of April, and this April, there is none. So there is substantial improvement in air quality, there is no doubt about it. Uh, coming to water quality, we have seen in Delhi stretch of Yamuna, again there was huge difference, huge improvement, but then in addition to industrial closure, uh, fresh water release and dilution because of that also had helped a lot. Similar improvement when we did data analysis for Ganges, uh, it was not observed. There is marginal improvement, largely because of the fact that, you know, in certain parts, you know, for example, Jajma or Tanneries were already closed even before lockdown. So that impact could not be captured. And then sewage continues to flow. So Ganges, of course, there was some improvement because of closure of industries. But as sewage continues to flow, uh, the improvement was not, you know, as expected. So in terms of improvement, uh, you know, there is uh, a quite significant one here, as uh, Dr. Prashant is pointing out. Uh, Ms. Narayan, uh, do you also agree to the fact that this was a period wherein nature sort of healed itself? You know, Vishal, there's no doubt that nature has reclaimed its space. and uh, But we also have to recognize that it's come at such an enormous human cost. I mean, this is not the environmentalists would like us to bear. I mean, I know I can speak for Dr. Varshne and for Prashant to say that as environmentalists, we are not welcoming the lockdown and the kind of disruption that it has had on livelihoods and on the economy. This is not the way we want to clean up our air. But there is no doubt that by shutting down everything, and this is what we have done, we have actually shut down life. 
and by shutting down everything and we have shut down combustion we have taken the cars off the road no trucks have entered delhi at all and as a result of it your air has cleaned and your you you, you can hear the birds sing today instead of the honks of the cars there is no doubt about it and i think your question is such an important framing of the question because that is the main thing for us today that we do not want the lockdown to continue because the lockdown has come at enormous cost but we do want the gains that we have made of clean air to some extent clean water but as prashant has said the rivers haven't seen that kind of improvement as you have seen in the air so the question today and i think that's what we would like to discuss is how do we as we go beyond the lockdown as the lockdown opens how do we make sure these gains are not lost okay. and i that is the big question for us today okay it, it definitely that is a very very big and relevant and important question starting from here onwards what have we learned and how do we implement that to try and uh, ensure that don't we don't squander away these gains which have been made in the past uh, one one and a half month obviously at a very high cost uh, something which we cannot go on forever professor vashne your views on the gains which we have made so far uh, they might not be as significant as you know we would want them to be and the you know cost here uh, attached to that is also very significant but ensuring that those gains stay with us how do we do that i think we have done this uh, very ex expensive experiment in which we have lost large number of people and it has been a tremendous loss of economy globally it is estimated that 10 trillion dollars have been lost because of this corona virus and because of the lockdown and this is approximately 1/8 of the global gdp so i think it is an enormous cost and therefore nothing to rejoice but at the same time we have to draw a lot of important lessons from this lesson number 1 that nature knows how to revert back it has got tremendous amount of resilience provided our abuse can be halted this is number 1 number 2 that if we control the effluent and if we rigorously implement the rules that we have made then it is possible to have good environment at the same time we can continue with the economic activity lockdown is not the precondition for good environment in fact it is only a lesson that we must learn that it is possible to revert the nature back it is possible to have clean environment and at the same time it is possible to use our resources most prudently wastage and effluent use of resources is a major cause of environmental degradation forests are being cut deforestation is the norm of our economic activity mm -hmm. and you know that because of this there is a large number of effect on our biodiversity 1 million species are endangered and many of those species about which we used to fear and run away for example snakes and scorpions today they have come right on our dinner table mm -hmm. now this kind of interface that we have created with the wildlife has been very irresponsible and not only that we are culturing them and we are growing them in large densities and as a result the biodiversity norms as well as biodiversity uh, uh, bio safety norms have been thrown to the wind and that has resulted that the corona virus has come which has costed us so dear so i think the second lesson we must learn is that we have to respect nature mm -hmm. and we have to keep it and we have to see that all our resources be industrial and be our very basic resources that we need for our survival they all come from nature and also all the waste that we create the only solution that nature has is to really treat there is no other way to treat your waste except that you have to depend for example the most important lesson that we have to learn is that hence what in all our economic activity we have okay. to provide a very safe and very clear message that nature's viability has to be accounted for for any mm -hmm. economic activity that we do 
minus that i can assure you that more such pandemics are on the go there are about 1.7 million viruses known to affect human beings and most of them are not studied and they are all present in mammals as well as aquatic birds so you can see that the what kind of costs are involved you see we have got not even 100 years back that we have got a very serious pandemic and now mm -hmm. we have another and these are the kind of things so i think a 10 trillion bomb has ticked and that has created global so to say complete collapse of the economic activity and the management principles okay. So okay. all together a new order has to come which provides respect to the nature which really dwells away the fossil fuel that we are using and guzzling like anything okay these are some of the observations that i have now and we will discuss it further okay we will definitely come back to you professor vashne but let me go back to miss narayan here miss narayan uh, from your point of view what can be the way forward from here because as professor vashne is pointing out uh, we cannot shut our eyes to the fact that the nature uh, the more we exploit it the more harm it will give us shall let's stick to what we were discussing earlier the gains on air pollution and the gains on environment i mean dr vashne has raised many issues and those will take us into many areas that we can keep discussing let's be let's talk about the gains and what do we do to make sure that post lockdown we do not lose them okay and the first lesson that we have learned from what we have seen right now is twofold one that the kind of shutdown that you have done right now is enormous but that is the kind of level of shutdown that you will need or change that you will need to get clean air and i want to take you back and uh, prashant who's here is very key to this uh, when we in winter at the time of the graded response action plan we talk about doing things to bring uh, air quality in control those actions look so puny today we're shutting down a few industries here we are doing talking about an odd and even now and then taking a few trucks off the road here you did absolute complete shutdown now that tells you this is the level of action you will require if you want clean air <laughs> now if that is the case then and scale is the case then you have to look at how can i scale up the action so that i make sure these gains are not lost and two things will come to mind one you clearly can recognize now that vehicles and industry because combustion has turned out to be the major source of pollution so how do i get vehicles off the road okay i need to move people but not cars now this is clearly what covid has also told us is that public transport becomes a big problem when you have a virus type situation but how can you scale up public transport how can you make cycling part of the norm in our cities how do you make sure that people actually can move and industry can grow but without private cars without trucks how can you make sure that the trucks that come in because that's a major source of pollution how do you make sure that you get rid of the old trucks that you do it all at one time my other solution will be that you have a major problem with industrial pollution mm -hmm. and we have been trying to tinker with it but suppose we were to say as of this winter we will put natural gas under the gst regime reduce the tax on natural gas to 1/5 which makes it competitive with coal which is an extremely dirty fuel and say that's all we will run our industry on we want medium and small scale industry to grow but mm -hmm. without pollution so i think those are the kind of answers vishal that we will need to look for and do it fast and okay. do it scale but i think the opportunity and the fact that we have smelt the clean air that we have wreck you know it's such a pleasure to hear the birds it's such a pleasure to see this clean air i hope this will drive action in the future 
Definitely. Uh, clean air, blue skies and the singing of birds is definitely a sort of, uh, you know, encouragement to go ahead and take those uh, larger steps which you are pointing out. Dr. Prashant, uh, do you agree to all these points which uh, Ms. Narayan is pointing out? Uh, these will have to be scaled up, you know, these options uh, will have to be scaled up uh, while implementing the relaxations from here onwards. Uh, or would you like to add something more to that as well? Some of them might not seem visible right now, but visibility will come with time. See, firstly, as Sunita ji very rightly said, uh, this lockdown, you know, is something which is unprecedented. This can't be normal, but it has given us, you know, a lot of lessons. One again, each one of us has been able to experience, you know, the benefits of good, good air quality, good water quality, you know, good environment. So I think that becomes our starting point. You know, while it is important that we put all these, you know, sources under control, you have good public transportation, you have industries which run on cleaner fuel, with cleaner technologies. You know, these are all important aspects, but immediate future lessons that you have learned. You know, number one, since each one of us has tested this good environmental quality, it becomes important that we you know, think about it as to what can be our contribution to this. Industries, when they start operating, you know, they must start, you know, with, you know, complete compliance to the norms, you know, taking due care of all the pollution that it generates. Enforcement agencies, you know, they also will have to be more strict and make sure that, you know, the polluters, uh, polluters, you know, are not allowed, they don't get free, you know, pol they pollute and then just go free, that should not happen. Mm -hmm. So enforcement will have to be very strict. Common man, see last winter, uh, Sunita, would you remember, you know, when we were discussing with uh, this greater response action plan, severe air quality, mm -hmm. you know, we made a request to corporate houses, mm -hmm. uh, particularly IT companies, you know, if they can start, you know, working from home. Now, during this period, you know, many of us started working from home. Well, all of us are sitting at home right now. And in fact, this is, this is the 20th episode of this uh, special show going on Nadia Sabha television, which I'm doing from home every day in the evening, sitting at home. So exactly. So what can be done probably is that, you know, all these, uh, you know, business houses, IT companies, they could probably, you know, make an assessment as to what can be, you know, done sitting at home. Okay. And then what will be its impact? So, you know, each one of us will have to assess as to what can be, you know, contributed uh, in terms of, Reducing air pollution okay. or similarly water pollution. So you know, okay. that's something you know which will give you immediate benefits. And then of course, vehicles, industries will have to move towards cleaner industries, more stringent norms, you know, better uh, stricter enforcement. You know, this will have to continue. But uh, shutting down like this, uh, of course, cannot be a normal. And uh, I'm sure that you know as soon as it gets lifted, you know, life will come back to normal. So whatever gets opened up, we'll have to make sure that you know it doesn't start in the way it was uh, there uh, before. Okay. Uh, we will have to call it a new normal, in fact. The new normal in life is something which we are all, uh, you know, talking about here. Uh, uh, let me bring in uh, Professor Vashne once again here on two specific points, Professor Vashne, as uh, Ms. Narayan and, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Prashant is also pointing out, vehicular pollution and industrial pollution. These are the two main challenges which we have faced so far when we talk about immediate problems of, uh, you know, air pollution and water pollution. So how do we uh, go ahead uh, in, in, in these two specific aspects? Uh, we obviously will have to open up gradually, slowly. Economic activity is required, but then challenges remain and stringent norms and guidelines will have to be there. Individual efforts might also be very, very important here. Absolutely. I think we have to be very careful while we really gradually open up this lockdown. Because if we come back to the original, then I think the situation will be very bad. In fact, there are two scenarios. Scenario number one, in order to really catch up with the loss that we have already suffered, the chances are that we will become a little loose on the environmental aspect. And in fact, many countries are really showing the signs of that. And we should really avoid that very strictly. Mm -hmm. The idea is the idea is really to have the quality of the environment that we have enjoyed because of this lockdown need to improve further, and we should retain it. And let me also point out 
that air quality and water quality are only one aspect of the environment and they cannot be isolated because things are interconnected. And therefore, we have to talk holistically in order to really maintain the environmental quality with which perhaps you started with, that how these environmental gains can be retained. Mm -hmm. So environmental quality means that it involves everything that we have within the environmental aspect. And environment doesn't exist in sectors like air quality, water quality, or air or water. These are important elements, but they have to be taken in a more comprehensive way, holistically. And this is what we need to know. And I think this kind of a lockdown has shown us that everything has to be taken into account. For example, if the virus has not jumped the animals, the question of lockdown doesn't start doesn't arise and therefore the air quality question doesn't come. So mm -hmm. I think to begin with, we have to really take all these things into account, which we have never taken before. And okay. that is the reason that we have suffered from this kind of a problem. Air quality is obviously very important because it affects our health. It affects particularly the lungs, which are the prime target of this COVID disease and mm -hmm. the kind of coronavirus which attacks. So I think these are very important. But at the same time, let us not be very much focused either on air or on water alone. But we have to take everything into account. And I think it is time that we can really do this. And this is an opportunity that we must see and we must seize. And we must see that if we have got a healthy nature, a safe nature, then we can have a safe environment and we can have a safe future. The okay. question is that not we should not really be concerned and confine ourselves even to carbon emission alone, but mm -hmm. we have to take the nature as a whole. And unless we do that, all these things will remain very, very fishy and very, very slippery. You okay. cannot really do... We have to improve our fossil fuel consumption. Okay. We have to reduce it. We have to reduce the dirty fuel and we have to reduce our effluent and we have to treat them well. And not only well, we have to implement the policies that we have already made. Our EIAs need to be more tightened and mm -hmm. must take into account these, these new dimensions before we really embark upon. Okay. One thing that is very clear, that the transportation requirement and the kind of transportation that we were engaged in can be reduced significantly. Mm -hmm. World over, it has been shown that work at home has worked very well. In fact, it has improved. Everybody has now extra time. So all these things are very plus and they can provide something on which we should work on further so that okay. as we open up, we should really reduce the total attendance that is required in the factories till yesterday. And we should really give more emphasis on the kind of technology which maybe brings people together, but without making them travel. Mm -hmm. So all these things are going to be there are new norms which are going to come. Oh, For okay. example, social distancing. Social distancing on public transport is an important issue. And that need to be given due consideration. How Definitely. we can achieve it on our platforms, on our these metros, and on our buses. And Definitely. if we reduce the number of buses or the number of seats in the buses, then how do we make up with the economy? So I think these are very important issues which need to be looked at very carefully. Okay, definitely, Professor Bashne, and these are, uh, you know, very, very uh, key uh, issues which you pointed out. Uh, Ms. Narayan, uh, as Professor Bashne is pointing out, we need to look at uh, the entire situation in a holistic manner as well. We need to act on specifics, uh, you know, take specific actions, but we will have to look at this entire situation in a holistic manner and have a holistic approach when we talk about solutions here. Of course we shall. I mean, there's no doubt about it, but, you know, the word holistic is often a way to delay any action. So that is why it's also important. While we keep in mind the larger framing, and it's true, the whole disruption, I mean, the way humankind has basically treated nature. Today, nature, this is revenge of nature at some level. You are beginning to say nature fight back. You are beginning to see the arrogance of this very macho society which believed that it could do anything and get away with it. We have been shown our place by a small bug. I mean, it's a virus. 
which has brought the world to its knees. We know that today. But the fact is today, and I think that's where the cusp is today. Today, the entire world is talking about fiscal stimulus. It's talking about bringing the economies back on the um, back together, which we have to. And there's massive money that is going to be put in by governments to build the new economy. The question that we have today, and that's where each sector will have to talk separately, is the question is, can you use that fiscal stimulus? Can you use that rebuilding of the economy to do things differently? And that's where I believe, and I agree with Prashant, that we should do things ourselves. But I'm also saying that's where the possibility of doing disruption for the future exists. Today, we are living in the most disrupted world. We never thought this was possible. So why are we balking at the idea when we talk about disrupting for better in the mm -hmm. future? When we talk about bringing CNG across industry, people say, oh, you know, this is too much. Let's really, you know, bahut jada ho ja hai. Oh, ye bahut, achha, theek hai, ye bahut achha idea, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. No, we should talk about these in scale, large solutions today. Why okay. do we set a principle to say we want to move only 80% of our people will move on public transport? Okay, public transport is not available. We will re engineer our cities. We will work from home. So I think it's important, Vishal, today for us to remain committed and optimistic about our ability to rework the economy so okay. that sustainable as well as um, uh, a growth for people. Okay. Okay, so there it is. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Narayan. Now we're running short of time. Uh, Professor Vashne, thank you for your views there as well. And Dr. Prashant also, as our panelists have pointed out, uh, the picture is quite clear here. It is for everyone, each one of us to see clean water, clean air and Clear blue skies is something which we have seen for days now, but this has come at a very, very, very high cost. Now, now that we are opening up gradually, we obviously would not want to pay this cost again to have a look at these clear skies or breathe in this uh, clean air. So obviously, we will have to sit up, take notice, uh, also use disruptive technologies, ensure that we take individual steps while the governments, Private companies will obviously make their own policies and will look at this option as well. But as individuals, we also need to go ahead and take our own steps, make our presence felt as far as keeping the environment clean and ensuring that the nature does not come back at us again in such a difficult way. Thank you so much for watching Rajya Sabha Television. Keep yourself Thanks. safe. And also follow all the guidelines, all the norms, specifically with respect to social distancing. We'll come back again with a different topic. Keep watching Rajasva Television.